This is a video in order to understand the chemistry and the structure of porphyrin. Porphyrin, as you know, it's a cyclic compound derived from pyrrole. Porphyrin has a lot of importance in life. Several uh, molecules based on the porphyrin ring structure play a very crucial role in supporting life. We are aware that heme containing uh, porphyrins are involved in transportation of oxygen. Magnesium containing porphyrins are involved in, 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 in photosynthesis, chlorophyll. Phycobilins, another form of porphyrins. And a fourth form of porphyrin is in the, in the cobalamines, which you find in vitamin B12. So in this video, we are trying to understand in the structure and in the significance of this particular molecule. As we have already spoken, in the basic unit is what we call pyrrole. So pyrrole is synthesized from two compounds, that is glycine and succinylphoid. As you know, glycine is an amino acid. Succinyl-CoA is one of the intermediates of the TCA cycle. Now, glycine and succinyl-CoA give rise to the formation of a pyrrole ring. How does a pyrrole ring structure looks like? So, a pyrrole ring structure, it has got four carbon atoms and one nitrogen. So, this is the structure of a pyrrole. Now, in this pyrrole, this nitrogen is coming from glycine and these four carbons are coming from glycine as well as from succinyl coin. In the case of plants, this four pyrrole ring structure is made from glutamate. Glutamate is an amino acid. It's very interesting to see how from glutamate with the help of a tRNA molecule, how this pyrrole ring structure is formed. Now onwards, this pyrrole ring structure we will represent in this manner. This is how we will represent in the pyrrole ring structure. Now, what happens in this in this uh, formation of the porphyrin is four of this pyrrole ring structure four of these will come together and it forms a flat structure and it looks very big let us see how we draw the structure in a very simple manner so in order to do that follow exactly the instruction that is given here write down four uh, nitrogen here four nitrogens are drawn now construct in the pyrrole on that. Second one and in the third one and in the fourth one. As we construct the structure, we will also learn in the rules involved in, in understanding the structure. All this was given in the 1900s, early 1900s by Hans Fischer. So Hans Fischer has really elucidated the structures. Now, in the first rule says that uh, this pyrrole ring, uh, in the, each of these pyrrole must be numbered by using Roman numerals. So we call this one as number one. This is number two, this is number three, and this is number four. That is the first rule. In the second is, now these pyrrole rings, the pyrrole is going to be connected by using a methanol bridge. A methanol bridge is, this is a methanol bridge. So here is a connection, a methanol bridge. Here is a connection, a methanol bridge. Here is a connection, another methanol bridge and another methanol bridge. Each of these methanol bridges are also numbered by using Greek letters. So this is alpha, beta, 
gamma and delta the second rule the first rule use roman numerals to label the ring structures use the greek letters in order to label the uh, methanol bridges so this is the basic structure another important aspect of this uh, uh, pyrrole ring is it has several substituent groups in order to understand if the substituent groups let us number wherever these substituents groups can come we will use arabic numbers in order to locate these positions so this is number 1 number 2 3 4 5 6 7 and 8 these eight places substituent groups can come which are in the substituent groups in the substituent groups i'm writing here in the first substituent group we shall denote as m that represent methyl group m stands for methyl group. in the second substituent group is acetyl group that is ch2 cooh in the third substituent group is in the propionyl group represented by p that is ch2 ch2 cooh and in the fourth substituent group is vinyl group represented as v that is ch double bond ch2 so these are the four substituent groups that are commonly found in uh, in a porphyrin ring structure now let us represent that uh, we will we will remove this numbers now the green numbers and represent replace it with the in the substituent groups you can have all kinds of substituent groups we are just taking example a and p let us represent the a and the p acetyl group and the propionyl group assume this is an acetyl group this will be propionyl acetyl propionyl acetyl propionyl acetyl and propionyl it forms a symmetric structure if it is a symmetric structure we say it is type 1 for five structures type 1 because it is a symmetric structure if it is an asymmetric structure and asymmetry happens only at the fourth ring it becomes ap 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 asymmetry this becomes pa simple asymmetry and that becomes type 3 these were the rules given by uh, hans fischer so type 1 up to about 9 different types have been identified theoretically so type 1 and type 3 are the one which are commonly found in nature however type 3 is the most prevalent one in the four five things that we are talking about occurring in nature occurring in 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 hemoglobin is derived from is the type 3 and that will give rise to protoporphyrin in its synthesis what will happen is there will be changes in the substituent group there will be changes in the in the double bonds and then finally it will become protoporphyrin number 9 that will lead to formation of heme kindly watch the video on synthesis of of porphyrin uh, in order to understand how exactly the molecule of heme is made we continue with this basic understanding of this porphyrin structure in the case of heme iron will be located in the center remember iron has such a large nucleus a large atomic radii it will not fit here it will just pucker out and it will interact with coordinate with the four nitrogens and one oxygen one mo water molecule and it will be placed there in the case of heme we are not going to look at the structure of heme at the moment we will continue with this particular structure now this structure 
you know, Fisher felt that it can look more, more, uh, if this is an elaborate structure. So he suggests a very simplified way of representing the structure of uh, tetrapyrrole. This is a tetrapyrrole. What he suggests is remove all these methanal bridges. When you leave them, you are left with the four rings. Connect all the four rings in the following manner. So what he suggests is you have a structure like this. We have eliminated the methanal bridges. This is number one, second ring, third ring and this is the fourth ring. This will be number one, number two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. For example, this we can have a methyl group, a propionyl group, methyl group, propionyl group, methyl group, propionyl group, and a propionyl group, a methyl group. Type three. And this forms the starting of something called coproporphyrin. So, in order to explain to you how variation is introduced in the structure, we have replaced this with a methyl group. So, what we have learned in this session is we have looked at how from the starting material of glycine and succinyl coa, how we make a pyrrole ring, how four of these pyrrole rings are joined together, it forms a tetrapyrrole. What are the rules followed in order to denote the structure, understand the structure and in the modification suggested by Hans Fischer in order to simplify the structure. This heme, uh, uh, this uh, uh, pyrrole ring structure with all the modification has a lot of significance. We have seen it in the very beginning that uh, uh, pyrrole ring structures link up attaches to metal ions. For example, in the tetrapyrrole, if it is attaching to iron, we call this one heme. Iron containing pyrrole is heme. Magnesium containing pyrrole is a chlorophyll. We have chlorophyll A and B, the most significant one. Then you have in plant system, in especially in algae, you have phycobilins phycobilins, another pigment and the last pigment in life is a cobalt containing tetrapyrrole that is cobalamine. You know that this for, becomes the, the, the precursor for, for the formation of vitamin B12. Look at the, the enormous number of function this is carrying out. Look, out, look at the heme containing porphyrins. They are several enzymes are, are present uh, in our body which are which are having heme containing porphyrins. For example, we spoke about hemoglobin. The main function is transport oxygen. Look at myoglobin. The main function is store oxygen in muscle. Look at the catalase that also having a heme containing porphyrin. So the main function of catalase is to eradicate hydrogen peroxide which are formed in the cell. Look at uh, uh, cytochrome C. Yeah, the main function is to uh, in, take part in electron transport. Look at the cytochrome P450. Yeah, the main function is to get rid of xenobiotics, foreign substances. Then they are also involved in several other enzymes like uh, uh, tryptophan pyrolysis. So you can understand that heme containing proteins, heme containing proteins have varieties of functions in living cell. So which also indicates that these are proteins that have evolved over a long period of time and they are very very stable very stable and they must have been existing roughly about 1.1 billion years. 
so they have been sustained over a long period of time ever since man or ever since living organism began using oxygen um, another important aspect when we are talking about porphyrin structure for us to know is its role um, especially in, in jaundice it has a significance degradation of heme will lead to bilirubin which is seen as a, a yellow color substance and this is produced especially when there is hemolytic anemia when there is viral hepatitis or when there is you know cancer of the pancreas what we have seen in this video is we looked at in the basic understanding of porphyrin is the chemistry involved how from pyrrole we have constructed a, a, a tetrapyrrole ring structure what are the various important uh, importance of tetrapyrrole in living system uh, this was the main thrust of this particular video